A pneumatic impact wrench is a power tool that tightens and untightens nuts, bolts, and other fasteners. You hook it up to the air hose coming off a compressor. The anvil at the tip turns at high speed to tighten until snug, then switches to a hammering action called impacting to tighten even more. You've probably seen a pneumatic impact wrench in action at your local garage. It's standard equipment for removing and installing wheels. Air pressure runs through the tool's motor, spinning a rotor within. That rotates the tool's anvil, which turns the wheel nut. At the manufacturing plant, they machine the rotor from a bar of steel, mounted on a lathe. It takes about a minute and a half for the computer-guided precision tools to carve out the basic shape. The next machine carves teeth on one end of the rotor, creating what's called a hobbed edge. Now, a computer-guided mill cuts eight slots. This shaping of the steel generates a lot of heat, so coolant flows throughout all these machining phases to prevent the equipment from overheating. Next, they temper the rotors for 10 hours in a 954 degree Celsius furnace. This hardens and strengthens the steel. But to fortify it further, they pump in carbon from a propane burner. The carbon impregnates each rotor to a depth of 0.7 millimeters. Once the rotor cools, a computer-controlled grinder shapes it to the final specifications. Then a machine with nylon bristles smooths the surface. This completes the transformation from steel bar to rotor. Meanwhile, the tool's magnesium housing has been getting a bright coat of paint. The housing has two parts, the main section and a back cap. Both go into an oven, where the paint bakes for half an hour at 200 degrees Celsius. Now assembly begins with a trigger in the stem of the main section. And then, with this tool, what's called the tipper valve. When you push the trigger, it tips, letting in air. This spring keeps the tipper valve closed when you're not pushing the trigger. And this bushing is where you attach the air hose coming from the compressor. Next, they install the reversing valve. It slots into the housing just above the trigger. When you press the trigger, the anvil rotates clockwise to tighten the fastener. But when you activate the reversing valve, it sends the air into different chambers, turning the tool counterclockwise to remove the fastener. They glue a rubber pad to the top of the housing to cushion your grip on the tool. A laser engraves manufacturing information on the back cap. To assemble the motor, they start with the back cap and press in a bearing on which the rotor will spin. Next, a plate to enclose one end of the rotor and an alignment pin to position the plate for enclosing the other end. And finally, the rotor itself. Into each of the rotor's slots goes a vein made of resin imbued fabric. These veins work like the blades on a windmill the air entering the tool turns them, which spins the rotor. After slipping a steel cylinder over the rotor, they enclose it with a second plate. Then, a larger plate with a ball bearing. Now some oil to lubricate what they call the impact mechanism. This component contains the tool's anvil, as well as the parts that produce the hammering action. Finally, a press seals the main section of the housing to the back cap. Every pneumatic impact wrench this factory produces goes through extensive testing, in both free speed, that's when the tool spins like an ordinary drill, and in impact mode. So, if you've got a nut or other fastener to drive, take one of these babies for a spin.